Uh, my name is Bernard Miller. I'm with the New Mexico Economic Development Department. I'm their Green Economy Manager. Um, I live in Santa Fe, and uh, uh, this is a new position that was created just last October to uh, promote clean energy, clean technology, economic development. Great. So did the governor create the position, or how did it come about? Well, uh, obviously the governor's a, a huge supporter of, of clean energy and the clean energy economy, um, but uh, our uh, the secretary of our department, Cabinet Secretary uh, Fred Mondragon, uh, created this position uh, in recognizing the, the growing importance that this sector will have for New Mexico. Obviously our um, uh, energy security, energy independence, uh, is a critical issue uh, for the country, you know, so that we have uh, reserves of energy that uh, can take us into the future and, and don't entangle us in, in political problems um, around the world. And um, uh, obviously, with the volatility in prices, uh, potential scarcity that we, we, we may see in the future, uh, it's also critical for that reason, just to make sure our economy can keep moving forward. And then there is a, just a tremendous opportunity here as well uh, to serve demand um, in state, out of state, around the country, and to export solutions to other countries. Uh, we have, uh, we've fallen a little bit behind uh, some countries like Germany, for example, um, on the technology development front, but we have a lot of opportunities here in New Mexico with our um, uh, you know, intellectual capital coming out of our national laboratories and universities to create new solutions that, that uh, will you know, turn into new businesses that will be able to um, export solutions uh, around the, the country and in the world, hopefully. What do you feel the major barriers are that we're facing right now to making this transition? Is it like technology-based, leadership-based, policy-based? Well, we're, we're very fortunate in New Mexico to have a, a very supportive governor um, and a very supportive federal delegation. Um, so this uh, creates a very, you know, a wonderful policy environment for us here uh, to make some strides in this area. Maybe some education that needs to happen with uh, some other legislators but, um, you know, so we do have some political will now. Um, and uh, some of the other challenges that we have are, you know, we, we hear it a lot. There's just logistical and time challenges of uh, transmission, for example. That's a major issue. Uh, we do have the potential to be, um, and, and uh, it, not to be, but essentially to continue our tradition of being an energy exporting state. So uh, we've um, exported oil and gas for many years. Um, energy through our, our coal plant um, in the uh, Four Corners area. And this is basically just a continuation of that trend, moving us into this clean energy economy, into this future. We, uh, we have transmission challenges because we do need to export this energy um, to the places where it's needed, just as a small state with a small population. Uh, we don't need it all here. And, um, and so that takes time. Um, another challenge that we have is that uh, it's both an opportunity and a challenge is that on the uh, manufacturing front, uh, you know, manufacturing of solar panels and other uh, clean technologies, that a lot of the decisions about where to locate factories are happening right now. And also we're, we're starting to move down the, the cost curves for solar power, for example. Uh, wind is also is currently, you know, can be cost competitive with retail electric prices. Solar still needs to be subsidized, but again, we're coming down that cost curve as a small state uh, New Mexico has a challenge in uh, investing in this future. Uh, we, we have all the political will we need, but we don't necessarily have the um, extensive coffers that some other states have, like a California, New Jersey, um, New York, um, just states with larger populations. And uh, so they can invest more money in um, incentives and various uh, programs to develop this industry uh, without it being a huge percentage of their budget. And so, um, as, a, uh, as a smaller state, that is a challenge that we have here. Do you feel that there's any one technology that's more important right now than others? No, no. It's really going to be uh, a portfolio, and we have a lot of options um, because there's a lot of different needs and a lot of different um, uh, uh, just parameters that we need to pay attention to. So as I mentioned, wind is more cost competitive now, so in some ways that uh, deployment is more naturally moving forward. Um, on the solar side, we do need to pay attention to that because we have um, a lot of potential there, uh, you know, with renewable energy generally, but with, with solar in particular, of the research and development out of the labs, commercialized into new businesses, manufactured at production scale, and then deployed, you know, uh, in solar farms and, and on people's roofs, et cetera. Um, so the solar is obviously very important and, and uh, needs some attention to make sure that we can, again, capture those manufacturers uh, and ensure that we have a robust um, uh, industry there. I think it's not outrageous to consider that New Mexico could be uh, a Silicon Valley 
for the renewable energy economy. Um, we have a lot of the pieces in place, the research, the, the entrepreneurship, the venture capital, and the, uh, the manufacturing. Um, so we just need to continue to nurture that and make sure that that cluster develops, uh, develops well. Um, another one that has a lot of potential but is uh, a little further out, will take a few more years to develop into a uh, productive industry, is the geothermal um, resource and geothermal industry. We do have a uh, company in state, Razor Technology, that's uh, working on some projects, uh, but we want to see much more. And we need to understand our resource here in the state, how it's different from other states, and how to best take advantage of that. And so there are people at our, our universities and, and private companies in the state government looking at that. Um, and one last um, area that I think is uh, significantly um, significant and worth mentioning is biofuels, um, uh, particularly algae-based biofuels and non-food-based biofuels. So uh, we have a, a, a push here in the state um, to really develop these industries, and we have some companies that are already located here investing significant, significant dollars in increasing their production. Uh, so Sapphire Energy mm -hmm. is located in the Las Cruces area, and that's an algae biofuel company. And we are expecting that that, that will grow and create a number of jobs um, and revenue for the state. Uh, because essentially, any place that's good for solar power is good for uh, biofuel, algae biofuel generation, because it's sort of proportional to the solar resource. So um, uh, again, that's great for solar power, it's great for biofuels. And we can use our brackish water, our non-potable water supplies, to grow these algae because they can be salt tolerant. So um, it's great in that way as well, and that this is not taking away from uh, you know, our precious water for, for algae or for um, uh, just our drinking water, that kind of thing. So, and uh, just the whole perspective, you know, we, we need the electricity, um, and we also need you know, portable uh, biofuels to, to run our vehicles and, and various things like that. Um, so it's, it's really the whole picture, I think, and, uh, and we need to be nurturing all these things. We owe a major debt to our oil and gas industry in the state in terms of tax revenue. They do support a lot of education and a lot of our, our tax base comes from those industries. So we need to you know, recognize and honor that um, and uh, um, you know, understand how that fits into our overall uh, state economy. I think we have an opportunity to diversify our tax base a little more. You know, there's always going to be fluctuations in various energy prices. And uh, diversifying into renewable energy and clean technology is only going to you know, make our tax base stronger, ensure our schools stay strong, et cetera. Well, I think it's very practical. And uh, like any new industry, you're, you're moving down a cost curve. I mentioned that earlier, and that's really the goal here. So with the wind power, it is, it is currently, you know, in, in many cases, very competitive with uh, existing you know, uh, sources of energy, whether there be fossil fuel or otherwise. Um, Solar, again, is a little more expensive right now, but we are, you know, I could, uh, there are graphs I could show you where we are definitely moving down that cost curve, where it's about to intersect with, um, you know, the price of, of um, electricity from other sources. So um, with any new industry, uh, there's a need to invest in it and to move down that cost curve, whether you're a business or a, a state or a, a country. Um, and if we want to be competitive and be leaders, uh, both in New Mexico and, and nationally, we need to invest. We need to invest in our future. We need to be, you know, again, I use the example of Germany. You know, they've had incentives for, for uh, many years um, for solar power um, and solar technology. And they are a global leader in the technology now. And they are exporting that and selling those solutions. Um, it's their companies, you know, Schott Solar is a German company. And uh, they're here creating jobs for us, but wouldn't it be better if it was in a, you know, a wholly owned uh, uh, American company? Um, again, just from a, uh, uh, an employment and, and tax, you know, kind of benefit point of view. So um, uh, there's investment and there's a return on investment, and uh, we need to be investing in, in this future uh, so that we are well positioned to reap the benefits as they, as they come out. So I think it's very practical. Uh, geothermal as well, biomass, all of these energy sources are, um, um, are very real, very practical. And uh, uh, what's nice is that you can take them on in smaller chunks and, more, and sooner than, say, one large coal plant or one large nuclear plant. You know, these, these large plants have lead times of 10 or more years. Um, so that's a very long way away, and we have a lot of needs in the short term. And there's a lot of risks with costs um, of various different kinds, and uh, whether it be fuel or construction, 
Um, and so I think these are very viable uh, solutions we can bring on now and uh, be adding them to our, our mix and, uh, um, and, and hopefully relying on them significantly in the future. Well, I think, uh, I think we have the potential to uh, uh, create a range of jobs. Obviously, the construction phase is a big uh, kind of intensive push for a period of a year or two or three, whatever it may be. Uh, and then you have more of the operations and maintenance jobs. So um, uh, there is going to be you know, uh, kind of a, a push, uh, but there will always be operations and maintenance uh, jobs and, and eventual replacement and all the manufacturing that goes with it too. Again, we're hoping to not only export the power, but export the components and the technologies um, out of New Mexico. So those will be um, you know, generating profits and jobs for, for many years. Um, and, uh, uh, and I do, I, I have heard and there, there's evidence that uh, just kind of on a per unit of energy basis, these renewable energy jobs are uh, more number than say a fossil fuel job. So, uh, you know, for a given kilowatt hour or BTU um, of energy, uh, renewable energy uh, creates more jobs and not necessarily at higher cost. So it has a higher labor component, if you will, and that's good uh, because uh, it creates more jobs and they're harder to outsource because they're very, location specific. Uh, you know, you can't ship a wind turbine overseas uh, to deliver power here. My position as a green economy manager was created in the economic development department um, just last October. And uh, I'm not sure, I don't know for sure, but there aren't very many of that type of position around the country. So again, it shows the state's leadership, our Secretary Mondragon and the governor's leadership in, in this issue. Um, and uh, the next step was taken this January of 2009 creating the Green Jobs Cabinet. Um, so this is a subset of the governor's cabinet secretaries. It's chaired by our department, uh, but includes the energy department, environment department, higher education, public education, workforce solutions, and also the State Investment Council and agriculture, um, along with representatives from the governor's office. And they are charged with providing an overview of the green economy and um, understanding where the opportunities for job creation are, and also the needs for workforce development so that we are uh, taking care of this economy and growing it as, as quickly as we can. So um, again, it just shows the leadership of the state. Some other related initiatives, uh, the Green Grid Initiative. I don't know if any of your other um, interviewees have talked about that, uh, but essentially it's, a, it's an ish, initiative to, in recognition that the, the um, structure of our grid uh, is not such that we can take on a large percentage of renewable energy. So as we are thinking about exporting energy and having a large percentage of renewable energy in our grid. We need new advanced controls and, and various meters and various technology that will allow that energy intermittent, you know, renewable energy to be on the grid in such a way that the lights stay on 24 hours a day, ensuring that reliability. So not only is that necessary for this future we're talking about, but it can, it can be a, um, an economic engine. We can create new businesses, uh, new technology that's turned into new businesses that is new solutions that we can sell you know, to other states and other um, countries, uh, potentially. Uh, there's uh, two other related initiatives on the workforce side. There's a Green Collaborative, which is uh, formed as a grassroots group, which the state is partnering with to uh, provide, um, uh, to go after federal money again for workforce training. And, uh, and then over time to ensure we have a sustainable training system to uh, provide the training for all the jobs that'll be created. And then the last one is just the stimulus overall. Uh, there's the New Mexico Office of Recovery and Reinvestment, which was um, uh, created by the governor to ensure that the stimulus funds are being used to create you know, maximum impact uh, and, um, and jobs. And of course, there's a lot of focus on the clean energy, energy efficiency, and renewable energy um, sectors there. So those funds are flowing from the federal government through the state, and, are, and, and uh, many are being granted out to local communities to uh, do various types of projects which will you know create benefits all over the state